What do you think minimum fighter pay in your eyes? Maybe you don't have an answer. Like fighter pay minimum, you just this guy just got signed. I think right now it's ten and ten. Um, or is it twelve and twelve? I think it's twelve and twelve. Twelve and twelve. Uh, what do you think minimum first fight UFC contract? Uh, give me a ballpark estimate. What do you think? Well, okay. Is it? I'm, I I love this topic. Obviously, um, is it fair to say that not every debut is equal? A hundred percent. I think that's very fair to say. Uh, Patty shouldn't make what some guy who just got signed from LFA, you know, is is making. It's Agreed. just it's not fair. Um, you know, so if you're a dude who's you know two and zero and you fought for a CFFC and you know you're super raw and you're 21, I don't think 12 and 12 is horrible. By the way, I don't think that's a horrible thing. I actually have more of a problem with what the higher level guys get or don't get, right? I.e. a percentage of the pay-per-view, a bigger percentage of the pay-per-view, a bigger percentage of the revenue share, a bigger percentage of the gate, all that stuff. Like you guys, look, take UFC 278. It's a solid card, but to me, it's a three fight card in terms of like the fights I need to watch, right? There's Usman Edwards, there's uh, Rockhold Costa, Marab and Aldo. Those are phenomenal fights. The rest, you know, up and coming guys, lower level guys, whatever, they're not necessarily, you know, selling the tickets per se. But, you know, Usman's a pound for pound king. Is he getting what he is worth? Is he is he getting that fair share? Is he getting what a guy in his exact spot, number one pound for pound in boxing is getting? Absolutely not. He's not. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a moving target. And I'm not trying to like, I, I think they're, first of all, number one, I think the show win model should be abolished. I, I don't think if you are fighting in the UFC, you deserve to know what you're making. And I feel like if it's 12 and it should be 24 right off the bat, right? So if you're committed to that, then be committed to that. 24 right off the bat. Trust me, they can afford it. They can afford to make the minimum pay. Let's make the minimum pay right now for every debutante who is not a big name like a Patty, 25K. Nice flat round number 25k i'd be 100 percent down with that now if you're a patty or someone like that maybe you're making 75k for your debut but then it should go up and by the way if you sign a six fight deal with the ufc right and and you lose after one fight they can cut you well why can't you you know change the deal or go look elsewhere after you win that first fight right it's all very one-sided in terms of who has the power and the leverage so there's a lot and on top of it, like, I'm down with USADA. I'm down with drug testing and all that. But you guys deserve to have a say in the matter. You deserve, just like football players and hockey players and baseball players and basketball players, to collectively bargain the terms of the drug testing, i.e., they can't show up in your room at 7 a.m. before the weigh-ins like they did Paulo Costa and ask you to take blood. You can't do that. There has to be times where you can't bother you guys. You can't wake up Alex Volkanovsky at five in the morning in Abu Dhabi to take piss before a title fight. There has to be terms. Everything is weighted on this side, and I just don't think that's fair. Yeah. I, yeah, I think, I mean, it makes sense. The show and win is just hard. I mean, a fighter can't even look ahead after the day they fight because they don't know how much fucking money they're going to have. But I, I was thinking, like, maybe the top 15. The top 15 should get that flat pay. They've earned it. They shouldn't have to fight for show and win. And then, and I've also heard that like the UFC doesn't take an account of how much following you have on social media when it comes to pay, do they? I mean, I, I think it's depends. I think now for me, for example, now that I'm my Instagram is as big as it is, and and they see the engage, not just how because a lot of people, a lot of people have fake followers. Mm -hmm. You know, you can really see someone by their engagement. Um, there, there's so many different analytics and data that the UFC can see from see who's watching what fights when and when does it drop off. There's so much they can see that they don't necessarily just need to go off social media or whatever. But uh, I agree. And then also one argument I make too on the UFC side too, like for people who say they like look at NFL guys, look at NBA guys, MLB guys. Why are they getting paid these fucking insane contracts? They also perform, you know, 20, 30, 40, whatever games a year, a season. Um, you know, so they're selling out stadiums that many times uh, as to where we're fighting two, maybe three times a year. We're not bringing in as much money to the UFC as other like NFL guys are bringing into the NFL in a sense. Um, so I could kind of see it from there. But the one, the one big event, the UFC 2, what was it, 76, 
is bringing in a hell of a lot more money than a, a one regular season NBA game. True. So it's not apples to apples. And also, you have to respect the grind. You have to respect that if I call you on July 15th to fight October 22nd in Abu Dhabi, there's a process there that you need to be compensated for, right? Like you are killing yourself en route to getting there. Another thing I don't like, speaking of like, you know, kind of rankings, so to speak, let's say you're, I don't know, Rory McDonald, Donald Cerrone, Jim Miller, Joe Lozon, you put in X amount of fights, X amount of time, I think you should be taken care of on the back end. There should be some sort of pension. Now, I don't think if you're a guy who lasted two fights in the UFC and you were just a cog in the wheel, okay, maybe you're not entitled to that, but maybe it's like, hey, minimum 15 fights in the octagon. When you retire, there's some sort of 401k pension system, you know, whatever it is, that will at least give you something for your time as opposed to, oh, you're done, flick, on to the next, you're not, rem like, what, what, what does a guy like, a, I don't know, a Rampage Jackson get for all his years? What does a guy like Rory get for all those fights? What does a guy like Robbie Lawler, what does a guy like Nick Diaz get? What do these guys, get? what does a guy like Frankie Edgar, who's approaching the end of his run, what is he going to get for those wars that he gave us for all those years? Like, what drives me nuts is you'll hear these executives say, like, we're like the big leagues, compare us to other sports, we're clean, we wear uniforms, but then you don't get treated like the athletes in the big leagues who get pensions, who have collective bargaining, who are able to have sponsors in their field, like OBJ, Odell Beckham, he's allowed to have sponsored gloves, he's allowed to have sponsored cleats. What are you allowed to have? You can, you can do stuff on your Instagram, great, kudos to you for building it up. I remember Lorenzo telling me, like, oh, we're going to be just like the NFL. It's going to be a clean uniform. I was like, well, wait a second. Tom Brady is allowed to be sponsored by Nike, right? LeBron James is allowed to get – LeBron James works more money off of Nike than he does off the Lakers. You know what I mean? How are you guys being compensated? And I could totally understand when people say, oh, they're giving you a platform. You're fighting on ESPN. You're going to be popular. Great. But why are you being – you know, shut out of all these other potential things. And oh, by the way, have you looked at the cage lately? Have you looked at how many sponsors are on that thing? Like there's 20. never been more sponsors on that thing. What percentage are you guys getting out of that crypto.com deal that you're wearing, the jersey, you've got that logo? What percentage of that $150 million deal are you getting? Uh, I, I, yeah, that was, I mean, I remember when they told us about that deal. And uh, I think I was the first fight where we had to wear the shirt on the weigh-ins and I didn't wear it. Um, but yeah, crypto.com. I don't you? think we got any of that. Um, I definitely don't want to complain because I'm in a good position, so I don't want to get No, clipped, I know. But... And, and by the way, Sean, I don't mean to interrupt, but I hope people, you know, what drives me nuts is people are like, you hate the UFC. You hate Dana. Are you crazy? Like my whole day, I'm sitting here like counting down the hours to Leon and, and Kamara. We're talking on the day of the fight. I'm sorry for dating us, but like, I love this sport. I love, without this sport, I wouldn't have a job. I wouldn't be able to, like, I don't want bad things to happen to the ufc i don't want bad things to happen to anyone even the brass who may not like me some of them do some of the i don't i love the fight i love everything about mma i just you know i maybe i'm a little too close to the sun to where i've gotten to know a lot of you personally and it breaks my heart to see someone on the back you know like a chris weidman who put and now he's got this leg and who knows if he fights again like that's it's all coming out of a place of positivity and love and i understand if someone's like oh this guy's hating whining complaining it's because i love it you know what I mean? And, and I just sometimes feel like I need to spell that out for people. I'm not hoping for the demise of the UFC. It would be detrimental to my life if the UFC went away. That's that's not what I want. Yeah, it is. It is tough, too, because people rack. I mean, they dedicate their life to the mixed martial arts and not everyone can coach. So they dedicated 20 years to mixed martial arts. And at the end of it, OK, sponsors aren't coming in anymore. My body's fucking broke down and I can't coach. So where do I go from here? Yeah. That's fucking tough, but also it's like we know that, so yeah. it's our choice to get into it. It's like we know starting yeah. out, we're not going to make, you know, not all of us can be as rich as sugar. Mm -hmm. We're not all going to make it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Which sucks, but that's just the truth. So it, well, it's kind of... That's kinda, why you're so popular is because you understand the entertainment side of things. I, I will say, though, you're 100% right, but when they're making as much money as they're making right now, it would just be nice to see that shared a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I definitely wouldn't complain if they, you know, upped a little bit of everything, but I'm not going to complain either way. Um. What's up, Sugar Squad? If you like this video, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and click down below to check out the full episode and subscribe to be a part of the journey.